Curio friends, today I'm going to walk you through how to paint the child kit. Make sure you pick it up at Curio or have it shipped to you. Everything's in there that you need. Grab some water and a paper towel and we'll be good to go. So when I show tutorials, I always paint on paper, but you will want to make sure that when you're painting on your canvas, you paint the sides of it also. So we're going to walk through everything step by step. I always love to start with backgrounds first. So you can take either your small brush and you can outline around the child or baby Yoda. And this is kind of our buffer that helps us so that we don't accidentally paint inside of him whenever we're trying to do the background. This is kind of our barrier that shows us where our stopping point is. And if you're a younger artist and you need an adult to help you with this, you can absolutely ask for help and they can trace around it and you can paint in the rest. You could use a small brush to outline or you could always switch to your larger brush too, your square brush will offer two different varieties of brush strokes. You could turn it flat so that it has a wide line, or you can always turn it so that it's offering you a thin line like this, so that if you're outlining and you're holding it nice and up and down, it still gives you a thin line too. So if you would like a little bit more of a buffer for when you're painting, you might wanna hold it sideways and it gives you a little bit more of an opportunity to have lines that you're not going to paint over top of. And we really want to always stress to you that painting is not about being perfect. If we wanted this to be perfect, then we could just print out a picture of him from online. So it's okay to see brush strokes, to see mistakes, to see areas that are different than normal. You know, it's exciting to see something be a painting and not be perfect like a photograph. That's one of the special things that makes the painting. So we're just going to take our blue and paint this all in blue. And I, when I'm painting, am going to kind of paint from beside Baby Yoda out. And I'm gonna be doing this with my white a little bit later on to make it look kind of like there's a starburst happening. And again, if you have the kit, you have a canvas, so make sure you paint off to the sides. But since I just have my paper, I kind of, kind of cheat a little bit and I don't go all the way off the edge. I let the edge show just a little bit. And when I paint, I love to move my canvas or my paper around so I'm not trying to paint over top of areas that are wet. And if at any point you're like, oh my gosh, you're going way too fast, you can always pause it and catch up with different steps as we keep going. This might even be something that you wanna work on a couple days in a row. You don't have to finish it all at once. One thing we wanna look out for are big, huge globs of paint. Because if you, if you have any extra paint in your containers, you can always use them for other things too. So we want to make sure that we're trying to smooth out any big, huge glob areas, but we also want to make sure that we're adding enough paint. You don't want your paint to look like this and it's real scratchy. You want to make sure that there's enough that it covers. And normally when I'm painting, I always work on the backgrounds first because they're in the back, they're behind. And then I start to add more details and more things as I keep going. So it kind of starts from the back and then builds to the details in the front. All right. So when I'm done with the blue background, I could let it dry and come back to it. I could ask an adult if I could use a hair dryer and dry it. Um, or, you know, if we do this next step and your background's a little bit wet still, that's okay. They'll just kind of blend together just a little bit, but you could always do this next part without waiting. So when I dry my brushes off, you might've just noticed that I, hmm, I might've said dry. When I wash my brushes off, I always dry them too, so that I don't have big, huge soaking globs where everything's running together in my paintings. So we love Baby Yoda. 
he's adorable. And we want to really emphasize that it's like, oh, he's so cute. So I'm going to use my white and I'm going to do something called dry brush. So I'm going to get my white and I'm going to take a little bit of my white off so it's not super, super wet. And I'm going to start in the middle and kind of make these lines that come out that help to make it look like it's a little bit of an explosion. So it's kind of a balance between like, I don't want big, huge strips of white. I want just a little less paint on my brush so it blends with the blue just a little bit. And if you don't wanna add this, you don't have to, but it's just kind of a way to make it look like there's even more emphasis on how cool he is. Ta-da! He's awesome, something like that. And I'm turning my paper, you could turn your canvas as you go, because what we want is we want the idea that everything's coming from the center and exploding out. So I'm going to turn this so that we constantly kind of have it so that it looks, would be radial, or it looks like it's kind of starting from the middle and radiating out towards the sides. And everything I'm showing you is how I painted it, but you're not me, so it's perfectly fine if you choose to paint it in a different way. When you get a little too much, you can always wipe off your brush and kind of spread that out a little bit. I'm not washing my brush off in between. I'm just trying to use it in a little bit more of a dry capacity. There's not so much paint on my brush that it's taking over like when I was painting the background. And again, in case you didn't know this, we do sell a lot of different art supplies at Curio. And if you're like, well, this brush is really small. This would be way easier with a larger brush. We do have all different kinds of brush sizes and sets that you can purchase too to add onto your order. So if that's something you'd like, stop in or we can ship it to you also. Great, background's done. I'm gonna go ahead and start to do the next part, which is gonna be his precious little skin. And I'm gonna to switch to my smaller brush. And the reason why I'm going to do his skin first is because I want to make it look like his robe is on top of his body. And if I do his robe first, then this will kind of look like his skin's on top of it. So I'm going to do all of the areas of his adorable greenness. And we gave you a nice light green in there. If you feel like you don't like it, maybe you think it's too green, you could always use your palette and mix a little bit of brown with it to make it a little bit darker. If you feel like it's not light enough, you could add some white to it to make it lighter, but it's a pretty nice light color already. Just like we did with the background, I love to outline. So I always kind of go around all my different areas that are the edge first. His eyes are nice and big and adorable. It's also easier to paint around things that are nice and big too. And I'm gonna paint that in. You can paint right on top of some of the details that are drawn in. If you have the eyebrows drawn on, the little hairs, smile or nose, you can paint right over top of those and we can add them back in later. Again, looking for anywhere where we have big globs, trying to smooth that out. And my last little step is his other little hand showing through on this side. You do have two brushes, so make sure you use them well. Don't use a brush that's too big for a spot that's too small, so keep that in mind. So one of your colors might almost look like red. It's pretty dark, it's this pink. You can take some of your pink and use it for the ears, or if you do feel like this is way too dark and you want a lighter pink, you could take some of your white, mix it in with your pink. White is always a lightener, so anytime you want something to look lighter, you can just add white to it and it'll make it a little bit lighter than the color that you have. So I am going to do the ears next. And I'm going to start at the tip of the ear. I'm gonna take my skinny paintbrush and I'm gonna to go towards the edge of my ear because that's the skinnier part. And I'm gonna carefully outline that first. And it's okay if I go a little bit into the background. 
That's why we do the background first. I'm starting with the tip of the ear so that my round paintbrush can fit into the tiny tip of there. And now we're gonna start to do the robe. I'm gonna switch to my larger brush and I'm going to do this bigger part first because it kind of looks like it's underneath a little bit. But you can feel free. This is, again, this is how I'm doing it. If you want to do it differently and you want to use the browns differently, you can. It really doesn't matter because he's going to be adorable and awesome either way. So you could do the dark brown for his robe or the light brown. So you could kind of switch these around if you wanted it to. I'm going to do the dark brown for the majority of his robe. And then I'm gonna use the burnt sienna or the lighter brown for the kind of the arm, like the little area that's the sleeve and the kind of collar around the neck. But if you wanna do it opposite, you can. Remember if at any point I'm going too fast for you, you can always pause it. And you can always let any part of this dry and come back to it the next day. It doesn't need done all at once. Okay, working on making sure that I have just the right amount of paint, smoothing out big globs, but not letting my paint run out that it's all scratchy. We want it to be nicely covered and coated. And maybe you don't like either of these colors and you want to mix them together a little bit to make your own color for the robe. That's okay too. Maybe you want them to be super stylish and you want to do like some polka dots on the robe and make it a little bit more fun and creative. That's awesome. It's your piece. So make it the way that you want it. All right, I'm still gonna use my big brush, but you might wanna to switch to your smaller brush. I like using a square brush, so I feel like I have pretty good control over it, but this spot is a little tinier. So if you feel like you wanna to switch to a smaller brush so you have more control over it, go ahead. Or if you have more brushes at home, you could always use brushes that you feel comfortable with. There's many different sizes and styles. I'm actually not outlining it this time. I'm just kind of using this nice and square. And his little sleeves, can't forget about those adorable little sleeves for him. And after we do this part, we'll work on the eyes, but then the rest of it is really up to you with what you'd like to do and your skill level, depending on what you wanna to do to continue it. So I'm going to do my eyes next. It's my last part that we're gonna kind of all do together, because I'm gonna give you some options for how to finish up the last couple parts. Oh, I didn't dry my brush very well, and it's kind of bleeding just a little bit. So I even said that in the beginning, gotta follow my own rules here of trying to make sure you dry your paintbrush. At least I was using paper. My paper kind of soaks up the paint more than your canvas will. So if you have a lot of water, you'll definitely see it kind of bleed and smear on there. We are leaving these little white areas for the eyes because they're little highlights. A lot of different cartoons have them. It helps to add to that like adorable look to it. And this is where you can kind of start to do different things. So with your brush, you could add his little smile, or you could wait until it's totally dry, and you could do that part with a Sharpie if you're worried about making sure that you're not going to make it too thick or you're not gonna make it too kind of globby. There are lots of times that I like to outline things, so if you want to, you could outline Baby Yoda, but you don't have to. You could also wait for it to totally dry and you would wanna wait like a day to let it dry because 
even if you blow dry it, it's still gonna be a little tacky underneath and your Sharpie will kind of get clogged a little bit with it. But this is definitely something that you could have an adult do for you. You could choose not to do it. You do not have to outline it at all. The drawing has some cute little pieces of hair. So I'm gonna start down here and pull little pieces of hair up to put those on his head, so cute. Give him little eyebrows. Give him a little bit of personality. And what you wanna do as far as finishing it is up to you. You might want to, like I said, outline it. Those are great options for sure, whether you wanna do it with Sharpie or with black paint. Whenever you outline, I always recommend using the smallest brush possible. And you can add some details into the robes too, like maybe the fold that's kind of up in the arm. You could add the little kind of hand that has a bend in it, add that little area to it so it has a little bit more detail. If you wanna do some shading, you could even start to play around with that and add some shading into the robe or some highlights. Shading would be areas that you're making darker to make it look like it has a little bit more depth to it or some highlights to it. But this is your special little baby Yoda. I love that you came and painted with me today with it. If you ever stop into Curio as well, we have adorable little baby Yodas that Nonsense and Knots makes for us. Some keychains, some ornaments, and we also carry ones that are awesome little pillows from the Cuddle Cult too. So we love our baby Yoda and Star Wars. So feel free to stop in anytime and check us out. After you finish your kit, make sure you put it on social media and tag us at Curio Cool.